Hello, Internet, and welcome once again. It's Thursday. Well, yeah, for us it's Thursday. For you watching, it's probably Friday or later. <laughs> Maybe Tuesday. I don't know. Whenever you watch it. But we're back with the free-to-play cast brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free-to-play related. I am your host, Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. And we've got news, we've got gripes, we've got changes coming to big titles, and we've got new titles that we'll touch briefly on just to get some initial first impressions after they've launched, since it was over a year ago that we did the first look and the game is finally launching now. So, yeah, interesting. But joining me to talk about those things, as always, Mr. Jason Winter. How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good, although I've got, like, Half of my face lit, and the other half not so much. I gotta put like, a, gotta like get a window over here or something. Yeah, like a little two face thing. Yeah, it's on. a little. Gotta, gotta work on that. It's not Maybe harsh. Shades. It's not harsh. So you're you're. No, right. I'll get you sit like, like this all. There all you show, go. So. Yes, it's just <laughs> like in a very regal looking to the sky pose. I can almost see like an American flag waving off camera there, and you've got your <laughs> salute going on there. Also on the line for the last time for about two months or so, Mr. Zach Sharps. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I kind of have a two-faced thing going on too, although most of my face is a little bit sh in shade. So yeah, yeah and nobody I guess, cares I guess about your face. They're always worried about your robot legs. I saw that in the comments exactly. that they were worried about the robot being away for two and a half months here. Yeah, everyone's worried about MMO bomb because like we're gonna lose our robot tax credit, and I it's know. it's just gonna be bad. Mm. It's just I don't know, man. Can we afford that? We'll I don't know. See. We'll have to see. Mm. We'll, we'll have to see if Troy nets us any tax credit, or if any of the other guest hosts get us a different credit. We'll see how it works out. But let's yeah. head on over and get started with the news. All right, what do we got first? Well, let's talk about League of Legends. We don't talk often about League of Legends because you know, really, the game's been around so long. There's just you know not much to talk about besides new hero, new skin, new this. Yeah, as far as we're just adding another hero, and we, while we cover that on the site news-wise, it's generally not all that interesting to talk about. But there are some big, big changes coming to League of Legends soon, TM, as in <laughs> sometime this year. Probably I think November, November is what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're, they're projecting is around November. League of Legends is going to be changing a few things, not only in the game, but it also kind of impacts their monetization. But as always, these types of changes aren't being received without the usual skepticism, criticism, and maybe a little cynicism. So let's break it down, Jason. What are what are the initial big changes that are happening in a future update? Runes Reforged. Reforged, yes. So what they're going to do is going to take, you know, all those runes that you get, those little, and again, I haven't played League in about five years, so I'm going to kind of go off how it used to work, and I think it's still pretty much the same. You have little, you have runes that you buy with your IP, which is the in-game uh, currency that you earn, and they give, provide a small bonus here and there. You, know, you have to get, uh, I think, a bunch of different tiers of them uh, across uh, various uh, various disciplines. So depending on what kind of... Uh, what kind of character you're running? Am I going to have some things that might add to your tankiness and your hit hit points, or something else might add to your damage, your attack speed, stuff like that? You get all those put together, and you just make them into you know your own personal customization for each character you're going to play. Okay, so they cost points, they take uh you know take up space in that in that sense. So they do require you to have to grind a little bit for them, take up time to require you to get all that stuff. Well, what they're going to do now is they're going to change it. So you're not going to have to pay for runes anymore. And also mastery pages is another thing. It's kind of like trait trees, like you see in a lot of MMOs, like skill trees, where you go down and you, you know get various bonuses, whatever, for that. They're combining all of those runes and masteries into just one system. So, And you're not going to have to pay for it. It's not going to require any IP, not going to require any kind of currency to pay for. You're just going to, let's see, does it even say... Uh, I don't even think you have to like grind up experience points or anything for that. I think it just kind of happens. And it's just something you get throughout the game. So that's a pretty big change for, you know, League of Legends has been around, you know, about six, seven years now. Eight years, I think, 09 is when it came out. Yeah. So for them to re-overhaul such a major part of their progression system, really, is, is something really huge. Yeah, and so, Zach, right away, as a MOBA player yourself, I, I kind of, as just as a peripherally aware of MOBAs and, and what the games entail, not being like invested in any particular MOBA myself. I want to ask your opinion here, because on the surface, this seems like 
a decent change. Uh, this seems like, oh, okay, the rune system did give you a ton of choices. You could customize things out. You could have additional rune pages to uh, accomplish certain builds or certain play styles, I think would be a more accurate term for, for this type of game. But some of those changes were very incremental and farming up the IP to get those and get the ones that you wanted could take a lot of time. But at this point, this many years in, there are plenty of people that have gone through and farmed up the required IP, hundreds of thousands of IP in some cases from what I'm seeing on the forums, uh, to the point that they don't have anything to spend IP on now. And so it looks like a good change, simplifying the system a little bit, certainly beneficial to a new player just coming in. But how do you feel about this as somebody that's dabbled in, in League and liked certain things and didn't like certain things? Just on a, the overall change itself. Then we'll get to other player concerns yeah. like a reimbursement. Yeah, I think that on the surface it's a good idea because I, I don't really like the type of system and I have it, the same issue with Paragon where you have to have specific things in order to really make your character perform how it should. So for instance in Paragon it's cards, you need to have the right cards, that have the right build and you have to collect those cards and League of Legends it's runes and masteries and so in this case, I think it's good. I think that they could think of another way to um, have sort of IP dumps in the game if they need them. But I think for a lot of casual players out there or new players, it's going to be a really good thing as long as they handle the reimbursement correctly. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, either of you two, but uh, it's been a while from League, for League of Legends. You've never been able to buy runes with cash or RP, their actual cash currency. No, I don't that think would be so. the equivalent of selling power. But from yeah. what I understand, at least at one point in time, I seem to remember you could buy the rune pages with cash, and sometimes yes. they had them in different bundles mm -hmm. and things like that. So on a monetization side, while this isn't a huge impact as far as the runes itself, which you could never buy as, uh, with cash or RP points, you only did IP points points uh this does kind of impact their monetization aspect of things a little bit jason and taking away the ability to cash by a rune page for instance yeah but i think that was that was always going to be a little limited on some level because i think you can only max out or i want to say it was at seven maybe it's changed maybe it's unlimited at that point you start with i think maybe i might be i might be getting the last, uh, I, runes the last and I heard confused. i think it was seven as well mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I might be getting them confused, but I mean, you could only have, you started with two, I think, so you could buy five more, so, you know, you maybe would get, maybe they would get like 50 bucks, I don't know what they were, five, five, ten dollars per page or whatever, so that, that wasn't probably a huge money maker for them in terms of a lot of other things, not to mention that that was the sort of thing that only really hit like the real high level guys who had a ton of champions unlocked. Certainly wasn't going to be a, a big deal for, uh, you know, a kind of a casual player. Maybe that's what this is geared towards a little more, is certainly helping out with the casual players and the, the people who aren't you know, no lifers into this sort of thing as much. If you were like that, you didn't have a ton of that stuff unlocked already. And it might have been a little bit of a hindrance to stop you from, and they talk about this in their video, being a bit of a hindrance from stopping you from trying out different kind of builds. So you had to commit all that money to it in order to try something different. Now you can try different builds, take different strategies, be a little risky maybe with what you try out, and it's not going to cost you anything. So, of course, this comes with the usual, yeah, this is generally a good change, particularly for new people and getting new people into a game. I, granted, League of Legends is struggling for players by any stretch of the <laughs> imagination, but this does get new players. Uh, I'll admit, you know, the rune st the whole rune thing was a little bit intimidating when I first start started off. Uh, that's because I didn't feel like I wanted to invest the time into learning the micromanagement of all these little subsystems. So forget it. I was, you know, and I generally wasn't a fan of the game to begin with. Me and my proclivity against MOBAs. However, this does bring up the question of reimbursement, right? Because there are plenty of people talking on the forums about not only what is our reimbursement going to be, because Riot did say we are working something out. Now, they have not said anything particular. They have not said we're going to refund you IP equivalent to the amount that you would have spent for all the runes your, your account or your profile currently owns. They haven't worked any of that out, at least publicly, yet. They just announced that, yes, we will have some type of reimbursement. But I think this gets a little stickier than that, Zach, because there are players, a lot of players, Players with whom IP has no value to them anymore uh, because they've got all the champions, because they've got all the rune pages, because they've got all the runes they want, uh, or all the runes entirely, or however, the, the, the IP currency itself just holds no value. They're sitting on over 100,000 of it now. So, 
I, I don't think, you know, Riot's in a position to just say, all right, we're going to refund in six different tiers IP like that, because what if you're a player, Zach, that's got seven years invested, and IP is meaningless for you? I think there's got to be something a little more intelligent built in here, or you're going to piss off some of the people... And in this case, you're going to be pissing off the ones that have been with you, obviously, for a long time to get to this point where IP has no value. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's really one of those things where in a lot of games, this is an issue where the hardcore players will build up a lot of the in-game currency and not really know what to spend it on. And some games fix that by allowing a in-game to real money currency exchange. So that way... Most people just feel, well, you know, if it's just there, I might as well turn it to real money. So maybe I could purchase additional things that are maybe more cosmetic. That's that's maybe an option for them to go. But I still don't really see it as something that is a huge deal regardless. Because, yeah, it sucks for players who are really hardcore in the game not to have stuff to spend that on. But that's an issue in literally every single game I've ever played where even in MMOs, you build up a lot of currency and you just don't know what to spend it on. So I don't see that as a huge issue overall. But there is some ways that they can definitely figure out how to allow players to dump that. Or what they could just do is have some sort of like a reward system and figure out how to do this based on how much stuff you spent on it or whatever. Instead of just giving you straight up IP, you know, refunding your IP, give players some kind of cosmetic rewards for having a certain amount spent or a certain number of runes unlocked or something, you know. Either way, whether it's a neat new skin that you want to get that way or some other sort of like... Uh, I don't know what they have for like you know user icons or something like that. So something that would be cool and exclusive that you only got by doing all of that. That might help make people feel a little better about their investment over the years. I will say on the plus side, compared to other companies that have done similar things, Riot is announcing this you know for all intents and purposes five or six months in advance. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so players have plenty of warning on what is changing here. And I've got to believe, Jason, that they're going to build some type of progression into this. I can't imagine just, okay, it's all going to be dumped on you now, and you could go in and pick what you want. I, I think there's still going to be some type of progression, but it's not going to be... I, you know, obviously, it's not going to be currency-based, or why change it? You know, you just change mm -hmm. the system. And But if they're giving them all to you for free with no points, I could definitely see, a, all right, at level one, you pick these, level two, you pick these, level three, maybe something along those lines where there isn't a currency or a... I don't even think you could like go with a reputation type thing because it just feels like a currency. In which case, why change it? <laughs> so, but I think maybe a level progression is probably what they're looking at. I can't imagine them just dumping this on a brand new player because then it's you know equally as intimidating. There's just not as many things to choose from. Yeah, I mean the, the main thing they talk about too in the video is you, know, you want to use your IP to buy cool stuff like new like to unlock new champions. So right. If they do have some sort of unlock or even a new currency, it's going to be something that can only be used for that, probably. And so it doesn't interfere with the IP you spend on your champions and, and the other cool stuff. The honor system thing is getting a little bit of a tweak, too, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That's, as I said in the video, most of the time, you know, you have your post-match thing. You can click on someone to give them a kudos or whatever kind of, you know, yay, you were a good player or whatever. But they said that gets ignored most of the time. So now what they're going to do... After the match ends, they're actually going to put up a screen that lets you vote for whoever you think was the good player. And you can choose how you thought they were good. Like either they were, uh, what was it, ones like good call-outs, good gameplay, or uh, just it's just a good guy. Just made the match more fun, something like that. So you can make call-outs for that, or you can um, vote on that for various players. And like I said, it's right there on the screen when you end, so you kind of have to do something. It kind of reminds you almost like of Overwatch, like the post-match thing where you get to vote for players. That same kind of thing is just going to pop up there. And if you get enough you know, accolades from your, uh, from your other players, you'll level up on that system and unlock a few uh, interesting cosmetic things for you, too. Yeah, and they're, that's coming to PvE this week, uh, mm -hmm. but then will be extended to PvP in an uh, upcoming update, uh, upcoming patch. So lots of changes on, on the League of Legends side. I think this was pretty, probably the biggest change League's had for uh, quite some time, actually. Yeah, and then you yeah. toss in the... the League news, the actual esports news they're going to do too, they're changing that around. So, yeah, yeah they've got a big week. Change, you're changing the entire vision and future of esports. <laughs> it's a great actually going to pay the players a real, mo real money. Yep. So, the, the three major areas of focus on that side are changing the structure of the league itself to encourage long term investment, sharing league revenue to provide better foundation for teams and pros, and then giving pros a larger voice and better protections. And they get, yeah, we're not going to 
obviously dissect this. Generally, the three of us are not the experts you want dissecting this type of thing on this particular topic. Uh, but that's that means the league structure is changing itself, the revenue, all of it. There's quite a few changes. They're going to go through a few different phases as far as how you apply. Then they review your application. Then you get announced as a partner. Uh, there's an entire post on uh, lolesports.com about this entire change. Was there anything, Zach, that you saw that kind of surprised you as a somewhat competitive MOBA player? Not really. I mean, it's just uh, progressing towards a better, more refined esports scene. And that's good because League of Legends is the biggest esport that's out there, um, along with Dota 2. So they they definitely need to you know make refinements over time and that's just what i see them doing and that's good all pros minimum salary jason 75k i could finally okay. realize my dream of being a league of legends pro player yep raise the minimum <laughs> salaries for all nalcs pro players minimum salary is now seventy five thousand dollars per year and then revenue sharing with teams and and the uh, other pros as well. So that makes it only about you know one fifth or so of the minimum in the NFL or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're almost the same. They're getting close. <laughs> they're getting close. All right, moving on. Speaking of uh, games that are kind of impressive, uh, <laughs> or at least this milestone's kind of impress impressive. WildStar NCSoft turning three years old already. Three years old. I'm amazed that it's been that long, first off. It doesn't feel that long, Jason. I feel like we were talking about this before it launched on Game Breaker just yesterday. I remember seeing their presentation at PAX in, in 2012, talking with them about it. So they've got, a, obviously, their celebration, uh, the Starfall anniversary celebration with, and that's going to go through the entire month of June. So all month, if you're a Wildstar player or you dabble, you want to log in sometime in June for special events, rewards, all kinds of things. According to the dev post, there's weekly events, login rewards, a new appreciation pack, a special anniversary pack that, of course, is available in the, in the cash shop. There is a ton of stuff going on. So I guess congratulations, Zach. Yeah, I mean, I think we're all surprised it lasted this long. Yeah, that's the I other mean, big thing, right? It doesn't yeah. <laughs> feel like three years old, but I'm amazed that it's made it three years at this point. It's already yeah. been relegated to the other sales on the financial reports, Jason. So uh, I mean, I, I remember back in when I when I went to PAX South, yeah, PAX South in, in 2015. So this was about seven months or so after the game launched, so two and a half, two, almost two and a half years ago. I went to the like, the Guild Wars Two party there, which was the Arena Net, which is NC Soft. So I talked to some people who knew some other people at NCSoft and said, man, people are just leaving Carbine now. It's, 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 it's over. It's done. And that was, like I said, over two years ago, and yet still chugging away. So, I mean, good for them. I, if, 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 I'll tell you what, though. If, if only half the people who said it's a good game, you should play it, actually played it, it would be bigger than WoW, like almost. <laughs> oh, see, that's not fair. It see, is a I don't good know. game. The problem I, just I'm not is saying it's not. What, I'm not you saying know, it's getting not. Getting to the end it cap is. or getting to the level cap at this point, uh, although they provide the boost now and occasionally do a free boost weekend so that you can get a character real quick if you log in, which I took advantage of and then never played it. I, I literally exactly. I did exactly what Jason's pointing out here. I logged into the damn thing, claimed my free max level character, and then never logged into the damn thing again. I brought some pro tips as far as uh, initial starting out stuff to a free-to-play cast and then didn't log in at all. I, it's such a love-confused thing between me and Wildstar. We, there's just too many games out there. There's just more games that you would rather play. It's not like it's terrible. It's, it's like you can go to Metacritic or go to whatever, go to Steam, whatever, and see a game that is, oh, this game is 85% positive. What is the That Metacritic means it's really good. Yeah, but there are 50 games... Ahead of it, at a higher than 85%. You're going to play those instead. It's like... It's above average compared to the rest, basically. Yeah, well, it's, it's above average compared to people thinking it sucks. It's not like it... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, there's a it, bar it, you want I'm for your, no, I'm saying your website splash quotes. <laughs> if it's 85% positive... Oh, that might be stop. If you, if you go to, like, uh, Steam Spy, uh, they'll show you a game that you know has 85% positive might only be higher than like 62% of all games on Steam. It's like, sure, yeah. it's good, 
but it's only better than 62% of all the other games. So there are 38% more games you'd rather play. So, so yep. let's take a look here. Just uh, I've never done this, so I'm going to pull this up for you guys, and you can tell me what you think. Uh, okay. On Metacritic, Wildstar has a critic ranking of 82 out of 100. Okay. Uh, so green. And a user score of 7.5 out of 10. Also green, okay. based on about a thousand ratings, a little less than a thousand ratings. Flip to the Steam side, <laughs> and its most recent 100 views are coming in as mixed, but its over 3,300 reviews overall come in as mostly positive. I mean, there's there's no, love, no, love for the game. But let me let me tell you though what I, what I I'm just looking at Steam Spy right now, looking at what it says there. It's got a user score of 71. percent That's what it says. The score rank. Guess here, little high low game here. What does the score rank? In other words, where does it rank in terms of all games? At what percentile do you think? Seventy one percent positive I mean, mm. if you show up there, seventy one percent of people say, Yeah, this is a good game. But how does that compare to everything else? Probably forty five ish percent. Forty yeah, percent. I'd, I'd, I'd go pretty close to that too. I'd probably put that in the right in the middle, the wheelhouse. Thirty percent. Oh wow. So seven out of ten games on Steam get better ratings than Wildstar. So, yeah. so basically, the, one of the most thumbs up reviews is probably good game, but I still have it installed. Good game, <laughs> but there are seventy percent of the other games that I'd rather play instead. So, <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Well, hey, congratulations on three, Carbine. I, you know, there's I've I've known, uh, well, not no, I shouldn't say known. I've interacted with quite a few Carbine employees throughout the years as they've shuffled in and out of Carbine, and the team is definitely dedicated, and they love the project itself. Uh, I'm interested to see what they're working on next. We still have no news on that one. Um, here's here's a good question though. Will it make it to five? No, God no. Five? No. Nah, I might give I might give it four. <laughs> no. I'll, I'll maybe give yeah. it four. I'll, I'll go, say four and a half. I'll, I'll go, say like get close. <laughs> I'll go out there right now and say it's not making five. And I honestly, if I'm as much as I do enjoy the game when I do play it, it I don't even know if it makes four. NC Soft is just a you know it, it's a tough beast. You gotta, you've got to perform, or NCSoft is going to drop it. And right now, we all yep. know that Wildstar has not been performing for quite some time, and I think we're going to see NCSoft's patience run out. Um, finally, Crossout, the Mad Max vehicular combat mashup. Uh, by Gaijin Entertainment, the team behind War Thunder, has finally launched on all, all uh, platforms. PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Jason, you did a first look, and I didn't realize it had been this long until I was putting together the show notes for today's show. I was like, yeah, it's been a while since we took a look at the, that game in a first look video. It, went, it was April of last year. Yeah, that's about what I thought. About a year ago, that's what oh, I thought. It's, it's 13, 14 months ago. I didn't think it was that long ago. I think I'm amazed. Uh, fortunately, it's one of those games that doesn't change too much. I mean, it, it is what it is when you get into mm -hmm. beta. It's just add on to it and things like that. At that time, you would run a couple of matches, built a, a car, a different vehicle or two, smash some things up. I think your only gripes, and we'll get to those in a second, your only gripes were obviously it's beta. There's not enough modes. There's not enough maps. A typical uh, beta gripe for this type of game. So first, you've gotten a chance to dabble in it a little bit since it launched. Since you were the one that did the first look, why don't you give us your impressions of the launch? Is it going smoothly? Does the game play fun? Hey, give us just kind of a 30,000 foot view after an hour or so of playing since launch. Actually, I was playing it this afternoon to get a little more in, and I stopped playing because the servers kind of crapped out of me, and I couldn't find matches. So, Irony so got a little bit of an issue there. there. <laughs> yeah, well, it is technically it's not launch; it's open beta. So, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, open beta, but, aka the most useless term, right. <laughs> especially yeah, in the exactly. free-to-play world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, so I've only played about two hours or so, and. I'm finding the same thing that from before, that it doesn't seem like there's enough modes. There, actually, there might be enough modes, but I can't get to them yet. It's got my favorite MMO thing of, hey, look at all this stuff we can do, but you got to grind up levels and grind up experience before you get there. And it's taking a while. It's still kind of fun to do just the random battles over and over. But I worry. what I really worry about is that if the progression is this slow now, when I'm at level four of my character, most MMOs, they'll kind of speed you through those first few levels so you open right. up more stuff. What is this going to be like when I'm up to like level 20? And that's the feedback I'm seeing already is that the game is grindy as hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw this game a while ago, and I could have sworn I played like maybe a 
really early closed beta or something. Because I looked at the gameplay, I'm like, this looks very similar to something I played before. So either there was something before that just it was inspiration for them, or it was that game and it was just in a really early stage. But um, from what I remember, if it was the correct game, and from what I've seen of the gameplay now being in its open beta, it looks like a fun game. But if it's grindy in terms of its progression system, that's a major thing that they need to change unless they could be perceived as trying to uh, make you want to spend money in order to speed that up, which could overall turn a lot of people off from playing what could otherwise be a, a decent game. The customization oh, see, actually of the got... vehicles is incredible. Oh, okay. It's it's incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I can get enough parts, which I right. really get by leveling up and so on and so forth, yeah. yeah. Like, I look at the little, the little um, showcase they have, and there are people who have like these things with multiple tank treads and just crazy stuff all over the place. They look amazing, but they're like level forty or something. I think those were some. Of, I remember seeing some of those from Beta. And I guess some are still in there or something. So yeah, it's gonna take forever to get to those. I feel like it does. Definitely has the Mad Max vibe. It's very looks yep. post post apocalyptic. You just built this vehicle to take out other vehicles so you could steal their water and maps and shit. Uh, it definitely has that vibe to it. Here's my ultimate question for you, Jason. I mean, this is by the company that does War Thunder, rivaling mm -hmm. the company that does World of Warships, World of Tanks, all that fun stuff. You've been w watching Cross Out for a long time now, a really long time. You've been interested in it. You've you've ridden the hype train uh, more so than I've seen you on more titles or any other <laughs> titles in the last year or title, two. Yeah. yeah, in the last year or two, to be honest. Um, and you guys, trust me, seeing Jason excited, it, it, it actually you can tell Jason's excited when he'll actually talk about a game. That's I mean, it's not like he woohoo, you know, not none of that. But if you start a conversation with him and he keeps talking about, it, then he likes that game. That's the way it works behind the scenes. He doesn't like get up and dance and cheer and oh, I can't wait. I don't think I've ever heard Jason say I can't wait for something to come out. Oh, I can't Total wait War Arena, man. I'm waiting for Total War <laughs> Arena. Can't so wait for that. Here's the ultimate question then. Being the connoisseur of all things war like this, so far, and again, just a few hours, we realize that, so far, give us the final word on this. Is it going to pull some time away from World of Warships or World of Tanks or any of those other games that you do play on a more consistent basis? Are you interested in it enough now that you've gotten to play what is essentially the launch version that it's going to steal some time from other titles for you? Rather yeah, than I put a it number is. on it because I don't think you've played it long enough to put a number on it. I think it is, but I'm gonna. the grind is going to get to me a little bit. And the other thing that bothers me, too, is, again, just like when I play War Thunder, it's like Gaijin just needs like one more guy on their localization team or something. Because <laughs> I just can't quite figure out what they're saying in some of the menus sometimes. Yeah. What do I need to do for this mission exactly? Yeah, that's it's far like, for the course. They, they could definitely use a little more of that as well. But, yeah, I, it's going gonna, it's gonna to occupy me for a while. But I, I, I'd give it at least like a... 30% chance I'm going to get frustrated with some aspect of it and just kind of throw it away at some point. It's not going to steal any of my time. I'll just put it out there. While I do find it interesting and fun to watch, and I do understand, too, uh, having played it and watched it, it is fun to watch. It is a lot more fun to play uh, mm. this particular game. If you enjoy watching it or you enjoyed Jason's first look, then you will definitely enjoy playing it. Uh, so it is worth checking out. Uh, it's just not doing much for me. Uh, due to the whole repetitive nature of that type of game. Although, speaking of that, this might be weird, but I am playing the hell out of Friday the 13th, the game. And oh, that, yeah, that's that fun. Is, I've watched a lot of that. And that is repetitive as all hell, too. Zach, what's your final word on this? Is this going to get any of your time? You're generally not the warships and tanks guy, but you check these things out. Is this on your radar enough to dive in and, and do the download? I don't know. I think I'll probably download it and play a few games just because I'm curious, but it's. I don't think it's going to hold me that long. Probably maybe a few matches and I'll probably just uninstall. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just being honest. <laughs> there you go. You heard it here first. We got one no, we got one I'll play it for a little bit, and one that it may steal some time from other titles. So a split panel on this one all the way across the board. Let us know what you think of Cross Out and some of our other news topics in the comments below. Let's slide over and do the weekly bombs. Zach, you can go first, sir. Yeah, I'm going to drop an A-bomb on uh, Secret World Legends just Ooh. because I don't really see the appeal of them making a separated game when a lot of the stuff I've seen from gameplay from um, a person, I forget his name already, who 
was able to play the game and actually share his impressions um, on YouTube to uh, the I gameplay. I got clarification on that, by the way. Uh, yeah. That is, it was Hive Leader you were talking about, I think. Yeah, Hive Leader. Yeah. Uh, that is not their gameplay. It is their impressions oh. based on a press tour that oh, okay. uh, that some people had access to yesterday, today, and mm -hmm. tomorrow, I think. So okay. still no first looks or anything. NDA, you know how it is. Anyway, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Just wanted to clear that up yeah. so that you didn't have confusion there. There was still there was still a good bit of like in depth stuff that they yeah. showed, and also there was the combat trailer that they released um, today as well. And it just doesn't. Maybe once I play it, I'll maybe understand. But as someone who just plays a lot of games in general and seen a lot of massive revamps from a variety of games, I just don't see why they couldn't have made this a patch for the original game. Because in the end, the original one is just going to die out eventually anyhow. So might as well do a radical change, try and breathe life into it still allow people to maybe transfer their progress over in some sort of way um, and then, you know, build off of it from there. But I don't know. Maybe once I play it, I'll have a different opinion. But this this one has mixed things for me, Jason. Like the more and more I think about it and more time has gone by since the initial announcements and everything, I'm just kind of like presumably this change was made for financial reasons, right? The game, well, yeah, the obviously. MMO. I mean, generally, that's what you do. So I, I just question like, just Zach just did. Is it something that really needed to be done? Like, what is the difference between adding some updates to the game as an MMO and converting the MMO to free to play when you got to think there was quite an expense to actually go through this whole transition into almost a new game architecture wise and some systems wise? Like, I, if the problem was money, wouldn't the immediate answer just be let's make this game free to play no more box and get an influx of players and pick up some rather than spend money to try and make money hoping that you make money on it by the way that's just a hope on the other side i it's somewhat of a confusing situation mm -hmm. the more and more i think about it from what i'm seeing of the combat the little bits i i am starting to lean more towards your guys side of why couldn't they have just revised the, the existing game rather than Having to start over completely. The only thing I think well, is yeah, and the answer they gave at the time was they didn't want to alienate the uh, the player base that they did have just to try to attract a new player base. Which well, but like you said, they they, they know the old one's going to die out. Yeah, and I mean, you alienated no them happen. by saying, "Hey, if you want to play the old version, we ain't updating it anymore." So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know what their plan was there exactly. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Go ahead, Jason, with yours. Uh, I'm going to give an A-bomb to, I don't know what I've got, tendonitis, nerve damage, I have no clue, but it's been bugging me for the past couple weeks now, and it makes it so that it's actually tough for me to play games for a lo long period of time, especially anything that's really twitchy where i got to use a lot of wrist movements. Uh-oh. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, A-bomb to my stupid body, apparently. It's all that cross out. <laughs> <laughs> Overwatch, actually, I think is what aggravated. I did a long Overwatch <laughs> session. That's when it really started bothering me. So I'm going to give an A bomb to the C to Secret World Legends as well. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's right for a slightly different reason. They released the Gun Roulette video. It's a short video showing you a, a Gun Roulette feature that introduces a bit of RNG to your damage. I hate it. 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 I don't like it. From the viewers, Luca Dorn Dornjack says, Dub bomb to the free to play cast and dub bomb to Magic Man, Jason, Zach, and Q. From the first time I watched your free to play cast, I got addicted. Every Friday when I get back from classes, I keep refreshing YouTube to see if there's a new free to play cast so I can sit down, open Guild Wars 2, and listen to your podcast while relaxing in game. I love the opinions that you bring forth and discuss games and changes in games. It's fresh and awesome perspective in which I love to participate through the dub bomb A bomb system. Thanks for being awesome and keep on at it. Thank you, Luca, thank you. You so much thank not you. only not thank only for the much. compliments which we certainly certainly appreciate but taking the time to to put that together you know we we certainly hear when people hate my my face here <laughs> <laughs> or hate jason's mug or hate zach's mug so thank you for taking a few minutes that's that was very kind of you and it is definitely appreciated lucas send us your class schedule so we can make sure to, to put the <laughs> thing up on youtube to match with it so i gotta get this up lucas done in 14 minutes <laughs> go ahead zach take the next one uh, I'm probably going to butcher this. Students, um, Yayoi. Um, dear Mike Byrne, I still dream with upcoming Lost Ark, Lineage Eternal, and Moo Legends every night. Let's see which of those games will be the true shiny online king in 2018. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing them since G-Star 2016 and even before. Moo yep. Legends, meh. 
Uh, Lost Ark and Lineage Eternal still have my eye, so I'm, I'm kind of with student. Are either of you still watching those titles? We get so little news and it, on mm -hmm. those, and every time we do, it's like gone through three or four translations, so we have to verify the hell out of it before we post it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they still have my eye. Particularly, I, I'm leaning more towards Lineage Eternal just because I like the Lineage IP, but Lost mm -hmm. Ark looks damn good too. Yeah, I mean, the more the more we wait, the more I'm looking forward to Lineage Eternal instead of Lost Ark. Um, but I, I, I'll i probably play every single one of them, so. Yeah, uh, Asian and Malaysia, I'm all over those. Yeah, you're definitely all over those. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> uh, Neil Phantom says, I'd like to give an A-bomb to Area Games for suspending, in quotes, Oh, this is fantastic. Neo tweeted this to me, like, right after last week's cast. <laughs> 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 all right, A-bomb to Area Games for suspending my account for building inactivity. For billing inactivity. Yeah, I'm gonna while you're reading, I'm gonna pull up the actual tweet because he sent me the screen. He or she, sorry, Neo. Okay. Uh, sent me the screenshot of the email. All right. What the f word? Now I'm stuck in support ticket hell with area support to get my account back. They ask which game you're playing. I actually played Digimon Digimon Masters online. Thing is, if you look at their game list in the ticket, they don't even have the game in it. <laughs> they also ask for the server, character name, level, and last AP transaction. Character name I can manage since I always use the same name convention across many games. As for server level and AP transaction, it's almost been a year since I logged in, and it's not the kind of information I write down somewhere. I play so many games, I can't remember all those information for those different games. I already don't have much love for area, but they certainly didn't help me improve that, and I only play one of their games in a very casual manner. Yeah, and of course, you you know, right, could it be a phishing email? That type of thing is the first thing that comes to mind when you're banned for something weird like that. It, the email appears legit, and based on Neo elaborating in the YouTube comments with service tickets and everything, it, it kind of adds more validity to this. But the, the email says, Area Games, and I'm, I'm going to edit some of this, uh, Area Games, your account has been suspended, is the subject line. And it says, Dear Neo Phantom, this is a notice of suspension to service of service to this account due to billing inactivity. That's literally the way it's worded. This is a notice of a suspension of service to this account due to billing inactivity. To ensure the safety of your account, a ban has been put on place to prevent any misuse. If you'd like to reclaim your account, please send a ticket to our customer service representative. It supplies a link and all the things that Neo says were needed there. And uh, my only thought was, you, you didn't pay them. That's what we <laughs> you were in. That still sounds like a phishing attempt, though. You, you still, yeah, it does. Yeah, it really does. Uh, but if you know Neo's going through the whole support ticket stuff, like legitimately on their site. A billing inactivity. You you have not spent money, so we're banning you. I... First time I've heard that one. Right? Mm. Slash Coon says, Debomb to my guild in Revelation Online for having the funnest battle I've ever had in a game so far, lasting for three hours of constant clashing and banter, a slaughter fest I will remember for the ages. Uh, we all have those MMO memories, don't we? Go ahead, Zach. Mm. Adokata says, also the bomb for um, to Awesome Knots. Friend got me, um, got it for me, and never got to try it much due to one reason or another. Would certainly love to gather a group together and try it out more. Not typically in the MOBAs, but it's not nearly as complex for someone like me to easily get in and enjoy with the harsh learning phase of Dota or League of Legends. See. Atacata, a man or a woman after my own heart. I absolutely agree on Awesome Knots. From the uh, question of the week last week, which was, what was your divisive MMO thing? That thing in the MMO game that you play that you kind of hate, but you realize there's probably a lot of other people that like it, and you know why it's there, so, you know, you just live with it. Edge Damadred said, for the question of the week, my favorite divisive topic is whether developers actually know their own game or not. I think there were a couple people that kind of took this in a different direction, and that's okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Mostly, I enjoy reading the trash talk between both sides. There are games where, in my opinion, the developers can't seem to make up their minds about what their game is really about. They keep sticking in elements that either don't fit with the majority of the other game elements, or an element itself that just really isn't developed enough to actually add any real value to the game. Or better yet, the element is seemingly one thing but in reality it's something actually something else usually moral or ideological choices fall into this category what happens a lot is that you're presented with multiple options 
but in reality, the option doesn't have any real significant impact on the story or your character other than what rewards it gets access to. So Edge kind of went off, but then brought it back. Kind of brought mm-hmm. it back. And we're looking at you, Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, <laughs> oh, speaking of uh, games that's not going well for, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw this, uh, Digimon Monster is going away. Yep. Oh, is that the game? 17 that's months. Not the same. 17 months, and now it's closing. Rest that's not pieces. the same game that Neil Phantom couldn't get into. No, no, that's Digimon, uh, Digimon Master, Master Online. Online. This is yeah. uh, what? What? What is it? Digimonster? Like, see, Digimon what Hunter. Now? Come on, Digimon the... Hunter. Oh, Hunter. No, Dragamon. Dragamon, Dragamon. Hunter. Dragamon. Thank you, yeah. Dragamon, Dragamon Hunter. Hunter. Okay. I knew it didn't <laughs> Digimon, feel. You ever say Digimon something MMOs? and what? like your brain says, "Yeah, that's right," but your mouth is like, "That didn't feel right." That didn't feel <laughs> like what we wanted to say. Dragamon Hunter. Dragamon what, Pokemon Hunter. is going away? Pokemon what? is closing. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Zach. Uh, Hellsworth says, definitely pay-to-win concept is probably the biggest within online gaming, but there's plenty like classes, for example. Oh. In some games, you pick your class, and in others, you scale up your abilities, and you can use what you evolved. To some people, having classes is monotonous, where while other claim that having a character without a class makes it lack identity. Auction houses and trading in general is another one, for example. In older MMOs, we're used to drop our excess in an auction house or even use our trade skills to make items to sell at the auction house. That's all fine and good, but it also leads to botting abuses, and some games nowadays give you tools to help on the trading itself, but not an auction house to craft and dump. Some people prefer the auction house. Some people prefer to make the trade by interacting. Another one is, for example, flying mounts. While everyone agrees in a way that mounts are a cool thing, the same doesn't apply to flying mounts. While some like the aspect of flying around, others see it as a disdain, claiming it cuts on um, cuts out the immersion. At the end of the day, some people prefer immersive to non-immersive. Others prefer speedy effectiveness. I think it's... Uh, kind of, uh, Hellsworth summed it up nicely, besides the pay-to-win concept, which obviously nobody likes. uh, Mm -hmm. The rest of those really do kind of come down, Jason, to an immersion or a non-immersion, you know, preference. So which side of the the fence do you fall on, Jason? Uh, It's really a case-by-case basis, I guess, for me. (laughs) Yeah, I I can't say that there's a one-size-fits-all. Like, sometimes I want... I guess I'll just throw another one out there, something like auto-looting. You know, I remember back in, back in the day, you had to click on every mob to pull the loot from it. And now a lot of MMOs are just like press a button and you loot every dead thing around you. Right. And I like that because it, it doesn't really – I guess that would be the point of it is does having the immersion actually add to gameplay? Does it really matter that I have to click on everything to get my loot or is it better off to just – yeah, whatever. I'm going to loot stuff anyway. It's going to happen. Make it a one-button thing. So I guess that's where – the immersion matters to me. Does it, does it actually add to gameplay? I think I'm on like yeah. the opposite side of all of these, Zach, from Hellsworth. I prefer classes, provided they have some type of flexibility in them as you progress. I prefer auction houses, uh, and I prefer flying mounts, as long as they fit with the general theme of the game and don't feel like they were crammed in just so that the game had flying mounts. So Hellsworth and I seem to be on opposite sides. What about you, Zach? Yeah, I don't know. I don't like classes. I would rather have like a bunch of abilities that I can choose from and sort of build my own class with. Uh, auction houses, I love. I mean, I made, make a ton of money off auction houses because I buy low and sell high constantly. Uh, and then flying mounts, I don't like because of the PvP aspect. It's not because immersion. It's because it just ruins any right. sort of open world PvP and existence within whatever game that it's in. And I think that's why I don't care if flying mounts work for me, because I don't care about the PvP aspect. Very good point. Okay. Slash Coon, question of the week. My most hated feature that others like is auto-sort buttons in the bag window. I want my bag to be sorted my way, so I know where I can find what I'm looking for and don't need to skim the whole bag, because that's lo- that what's logical to them is not logical to me. And the biggest reason I rage quit MMOs these days after hitting said button. Wow. Slash not a fan I, of bag sorting I, I got to I gotta give a kudos to someone who's raging that hard over inventory. Is, huh? Are you sure you're not Slash Coon? <laughs> Go ahead, I wrote that comment Zach, myself. Take the yeah. next one. Um, Elv1 says, I hate the Trinity with a passion. Previous question of the week, the Chronicles of Spellborn 
It was way ahead of its time and did not get the exposure it needed, but did action combat better than most MMOs nowadays. Oh, now somebody wants to bring up a game <laughs> that should be revived on Steam. Hates the yep. Trinity. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, to call 2399, this is a question of the week. The thing I hate, or in my case, could give two bleeps about is rating. <gasps> I know people Blasphemy. like it, but I just don't give a damn. Please spare me your A12S stories because I don't care. A12S. What is, I don't know it's what Alexander means. 12 Savage from Final Fantasy. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. And I'm sick of those stories, too. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, it's my turn, isn't it? Yep. James as far as a question of the week. A few things I hate about MMOs, mainly MMORPGs, that can be summed up in classic MMORPG-style games. Basic questing, kill 10 of this, collect 10 of that, basic tab targeting combat, garbage graphics, basic fantasy setting. I hate the basics jason oh boy do they make money how many how many youtube accounts do you have james continues and <laughs> says i just had to add in another question of the week or was it the answer of the week either or chests rng mother freaking chests it makes it hard to spend money on games because of them go ahead zach um, Adokata says, honestly, the most damaging thing to take me out of a game is forced open world PvP. <laughs> I understand that there is a crowd for it. How ironic. Such as myself. <laughs> forcing me to flag on or put on some outfit towards a faction just to compete basic PvE quest just takes me right out of it. That sounds a lot like Blade and Soul. Because yeah. I remember a part where they Changing make you put the, on a PvP costumes. or faction costume. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, Metallica fan 1442 says auto pathing and insanely clustered UI, which seems to be mainly in Asian MMORPGs. Yeah, somebody with auto pathing, and you know what? I'm gonna put that <laughs> down as they don't like the font either, Jason. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Question of the week for next week: What's a real alternative to the Trinity? We you know, tank, DPS, heals. We saw Guild Wars 2 try to do that. Arguably, I don't think it worked out all that well. But for people that don't like the Trinity aspect of a typical MMORPG, what's the alternative while being able to maintain a PvE-type experience as well? Put your comments down below. Don't forget your weekly bombs, dub bomb for something good, a bomb for something bad, or just general questions or comments to the panel. Until then, Jason, where can everybody find you? Find me on the Twitters at WinterInformal. Zach? Aaron can find me at Zach Sharps on Twitter. I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. You can follow me personally on Twitter at Magic Man 1. That's uh, M-A-G-I-C-K. <laughs> I always forget I'm looking at myself in a mirror. M-A-G-I-C-K-M-A... <laughs> Shut up, Zach. <laughs> M-A-N-1. Uh, while you're there, of course, follow at MMO Bomb so we can tweet all the giveaways, news, first looks, videos, and casts right to your Twitter feed. Until next week, stay safe. We'll see you on the server.